it's very important for Europe, especially at a moment where we have political impasse in Italy as well. It would have been uh, probably quite disastrous for Europe to have the two out of three of the largest EU27 uh, economies in a situation of political impasse. Um, then at the same time, uh, the big question is, is the price for this stability in the short term in Germany, uh, is it going to be paid in the long term? Uh, we have already seen that the SPD is polling very, very low now. Uh, probably year. also, in, in, you know, like as a, as a consequence of uh, the decision of, of entire grand coalition uh, with Angela Merkel's uh, CDU. It feels as though already in the negotiations there were key compromises around ministries, but also around policies for Angela Merkel's party. When we cast the net over to Italian politics, it feels as though some of the issues that saw Merkel lose her margin were really around immigration. And even in the Italian election, you've seen on the far right side that the league leader, Matteo Salvini, has been accused of stirring up racial tensions. Is migration in Europe going to suffer? I mean, overall numbers going to be capped because of these protest votes that you're now seeing across key economies, across key countries? Probably Europe is going to take, uh, and, and particularly Italy, which is at the forefront of, of immigration, uh, are the stance on, on, on immigration. Uh, also because there is a lack of solidarity in Europe, especially uh, when we talk about Eastern European countries, uh, in terms of redistributing uh, arrivals. Then, uh, again, yeah, there is also, uh, I believe, a, a trend in the right to move further to the right. We've seen it uh, with the success of the uh, Northern League, now League, in Italy, uh, overcoming uh, Berlusconi Swartz Italia. We, we see it in Germany with uh, Allianz für Deutschland uh, now polling uh, very high. Um, France is possibly uh, the exception, but again, uh, how long the Macron factor is going gonna, is gonna to last uh, is not to be excluded uh, in the future, a uh, revival of, of the Front National uh, under these, uh, these conditions. One of our viewers writing through Hammond pointing out that um, what has been interesting to him around Italian politics has been the, the move to the right more than expected. And do you think this is something that we need to watch out for here in Europe, that the, the right is far right in particular making a comeback, which, you know, after World War II, you saw sort of the, the far right and some of these extreme uh, political views really tame for decades. Are we back to leaning into some of those more extreme political ideas? Well, for, for example, in Italy, there was quite a lot of talk in the, in the run-up to the, to the vote of arrival of fascism in, in Italy. I believe that was overstated. Uh, in the end, fascist parties in, in Italy uh, only got very, very uh, low percentages of, of, of votes. But at the same time, uh, yeah, it is definitely the case, I believe, that the right is moving uh, more towards uh, higher stances on immigration and uh, possibly not only on immigration. And at the same time, uh, the other uh, side of the coin is a left that uh, everywhere in Europe is struggling to, to find an identity. Uh, Renzi's Democratic Party in Italy was until a few years ago, seen as the exception, as the one that was uh, the one party that was managing to uh, keep polling very high and, and performing uh, well. Well, now Italy as well, uh, the left in Italy as well, has, has lost uh, support massively. 